Hello and welcome to another edition of Ask David. Hot conditions, stormy at times, plenty of rain on the way, which is good for the plants, saves you having to do the watering, but it does encourage lots of weed growth. So keep on top of the weeds. But in the meantime, there are lots of questions that are popping up with you. Uh, lots of difficult things to deal with in the garden at the moment, lots of pests and diseases. So I'm gonna get on and answer some of your pressing questions. Now top of the list this week is Alexander. He says that he planted a dwarf crab apple earlier this year uh, and the plant isn't looking very good. He said that the top growth has all died back but there are some strong shoots coming from lower down on the trunk. Now Alexander here, the, the point is that your dwarf crab apple will have been grafted onto a rootstock. So you need to trace down the stem and look for a slight bulge on the stem, which is where the top growth will have been originally grafted onto the roots. If those new shoots are coming from below the graft union, then those shoots will be of the rootstock and not the dwarf crab apple at the top. If they are coming from above the graft union, then thumbs up, you can keep the tree pruned back to just above those shoots uh, and the new growth will be the dwarf crab apple that you want. Unfortunately, as I say, if they're coming from below that graft union, then they'll be from the root stock and they won't necessarily be what you want. Kathleen's contacted me about three clematis that she has growing in small pots. Uh, she says that they're growing well, they're up to about nine feet tall, but there's not a flower on any of them. Now Kathleen, you are asking a lot of your clematis if you're growing them in small pots. Clematis like a cool, deep root run. They like their heads in the sun, but their roots in the shade. And if you've got them in very small pots, then they're very prone to drying out and also heating up uh, and I don't think those clematis or clematis will ever do very well. So the key watchword is plant them in big pots to start with so that they've got plenty of compost or soil to go at uh, and nice deep pots as well and then you'll get the best results from them. And as I say clematis or clematis need their heads in the sun so they need a nice sunny west or south facing position really to do of their best and as I say keep their roots shaded as much as possible. To be honest, if you can grow them in the ground, I think you'd be better off because those roots can go down into the cooler soil, tap into the moisture they need, and they won't be reliant on you to give them water and feed in the container. The other thing to bear in mind is that these could be early spring flowering clematis. Um, I'm not really sure, you don't say in your, in your message. But if they're late summer flowering ones, then they should really be in flower. And so I think it's a cultural problem. Give them some really good conditions and they'll reward you. Fred's got in contact to ask whether it's possible to grow peonies from seed. Now Fred, you don't say whether these are tree peonies or species peonies or herbaceous peonies. So um, I'll just answer generally. Um, herbaceous peonies um, the varieties certainly and varieties of tree peonies will not come true from seed. It is possible to grow them, the plants, if they produce seed in your garden, it is possible to grow new plants from that seed, but it won't be like the variety that you've been growing. Both herbaceous peonies and the cultivated forms of tree peony, the ones with the enormous flowers, they don't come through from seed, so don't expect them to be like their parents. However, the species peonies, things like peony lutea and peony uh, delavii, they will come through from seed. Uh, they will look like their parents. There will be slight differences, but Broadly, they'll look like their parents and they grow very, very well from seed too. So I'd be inclined to sow the very large seeds into a gritty compost, um, cover the seeds over and leave them somewhere sheltered in a corner of the garden, covered with a piece of wire mesh to keep any voles and mice out and leave them there over the winter. Uh, they'll get the cold condi conditions that they need over the winter and then they should start to germinate next spring. 
Now Kathy's not very happy with her Hypericum callosinum. This is the ground cover Rose of Sharon. It, it grows probably to about 15 centimeters tall, about six inches to eight inches tall. Um, and it's normally smothered in lovely gold flowers during about July, August, and on into September. She says that it's a well-established clump, uh, but it's not flowering and she wonders why. Well, I've seen this flowering in full sun, absolutely flowering its socks off. If it's growing in a shady spot where it doesn't get very much in the way of direct sunlight, then generally speaking, it won't flower as prolifically. So that could be the cause. It could be growing in too shady a spot. The other place where it really does struggle at times is in sandy soil, uh, and it needs to get really well established in those sandy conditions before it will then start to flower, flower. And that probably will take about five or six years until it's really well established. So I would still be a bit patient with this, Kathy. I would give them a, another a few years if they're growing in the nice sunny spot um, and then just shave off the top growth uh, in the spring just before they start into growth again. Uh, this one is semi-deciduous so it loses most of its leaves so in about March time just before it's going to start into growth shave off that top growth and let some new strong vigorous growth come from the base uh, and I think you'll find that they'll do really well. And if they still don't flower, then it's worth giving them a handful of sulfate of potash around the plants. Don't overdo it, but give a handful of sulfate of potash sprinkled around the plants just before they start into growth in spring, and that should encourage them to flower too. Now lastly this week, many of you have written in about your honeysuckles and Jill isn't on her own in this. Uh, she says that last year her honeysuckle was absolutely brilliant. This year it's looking a bit bare, doesn't look very well, isn't flowering very well, and it's quite bare in the center. And I think this is mostly down to two things. The first is that it's worth pruning out all that old woody growth as soon as your honeysuckles have finished flowering or you can wait until just before they start to grow into growth in spring. So next March would be an ideal time to prune out all that old woody growth and encourage some new strong shoots to come uh, from the plant. And that will keep it much healthier and much less like a bird's nest that's attached to the fence. The other thing to say is that this year uh, honeysuckles have probably been under stress because of the very dry hot growing conditions uh, and that may have caused them a lot of stress and you may get all sorts of um, growth problems, stunted growth and not very vigorous growth but also mildew uh, and they are real devils for getting mildew. They get really bad mildew. So that's what causes the white meal on the surface of the leaves. And again, that can be helped by pruning out all the old tangle of growth uh, before they start into growth early in the season, just to keep this center open so that the air can circulate through and then you won't get such horrible um, mildew infestation. So keep the plants in good condition by mulching around the base with a two inch mulch of compost on the surface of the soil just to keep the soil enriched and keep the plants growing well. Don't overfeed them, prune them so that they get that air circulation and you should get masses of flowers on your honeysuckle but you will have to wait till next summer. There we are then, some more answers to some of your pressing questions. Don't forget that you can look back over previous episodes of Ask David to see if you can find the answer to your question that I've answered previously. And it just remains for me to say that I look forward to seeing you next week for another edition of Ask David.